let's go ahead and get started. Hope everyone is doing great today. Thank you for joining us. I am joined uh, today by uh, a friend of mine, a VoIP expert in the field, and we're going to be covering a lot of good stuff, guys. Uh, my goal with this, this, this training, this webinar session today, whatever you want to call it, is um, you know, if you're considering a VoIP move at your office, uh, we want to give you some good uh, tips and strategies to ensure that you have a smooth rollout. And ideally, we can help you uh, with some of these gotchas that you may have not been considering, uh, or maybe some of the things that you're not even aware of uh, as, as challenges that could be on the horizon, given the different solutions and, and all the different options you have out there uh, when it comes to VoIP and uh, Unified Communication, UCAS. Uh, is the acronym UCAAS is what you're hearing a lot now these days. So today is very casual panel here. We've got some slides as reference material, uh, but we're going to talk very briefly on the business case for VoIP so phone solutions. Um, from there, we're going to hit on product and partnering considerations. When you are choosing uh, to go with XYZ solution uh, and how you're going to support it, things that you should be considering through that decision making process. Okay. And then after that, we're going to talk about strategies for that smooth rollout. Um, you know, what can you do pre, during, and post rollout to ensure that your team really adopts this solution, right? And you're not creating a situation where now you have a bunch of team members. Um, using their cell phones. They've rerouted their, their business communications because the VoIP system stinks there at the office, right? Or maybe it's been unreliable or the call quality isn't there. Um, and then we're gonna talk about the market landscape. Having, a, having an expert in the field on the phone with us or on the session today, um, having ourselves done you know, over a hundred migrations uh, and, and working with many of the industry leaders um, you know, we're familiar with the caveats of uh, moving to a ring central or looking at what an eight by eight or, or uh, you know, a Vonage, what does that look like compared to a, a real, you know, adequate VoIP phone solution, solution for your office? We're going to do a QA and a at the, at the end here. So if you're on the session, if you have any questions about, uh, uh, you know, uh, anything that George is bringing up or any of the topics we have here, feel free to enter in those and we will go through that here at the end. All right. So um, very quickly, tell you a little bit about the presenters here. Um, thank you for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Reese Horman, CEO of TechVera. We are an MSP, we're an IT firm uh, based in Denton, Texas. It's right near the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We've got 20 team members here and uh, we work exclusively with small businesses. And so uh, for, for 20 to 100 user uh, organizations, we do a lot of uh, turnkey IT engagements, kind of managing all of their IT needs, rolling it into one predictable spend. Uh, for bigger organizations, we do co-managed uh, opportunities. So we will work with a bigger organization and maybe just manage, uh, you know, their 365 environment for them or their cloud efforts or their security stack, right? And with us today is Mr. George Bardisi. George, could you introduce yourself here, please? Yeah, absolutely. Been in the technology field uh, for approximately 20 years. So started young. Uh, I've been in the trenches, right? I've been underneath the desks. I've plugged in the wires and been everywhere all the way to application development and system admin. I mean, I, I kind of have a lot of different hats that I've, I've kind of progressed through through the years, but uh, I'm founder and CEO of a company named BVoIP. We uh, obviously, you know, concentrate ourselves in the uh, voice unified communication space and uh, been, you know, working with uh, Reese and the TechVera team for several years. So uh, happy to jump on and talk shop. Cool. Thank you, man. So George, let's, let's talk very briefly, high level, right? You know, we're going to have audience members that maybe have already, they've already gotten leadership on board with that VoIP solution. They know the use case, but when you could boil it down to three or four things, if you're in that, you know, discovery phase of looking at a VoIP solution and, and looking at the use case for VoIP, um, let's talk about some of the things that, that are going to be just you know, home run things to consider really driving, uh, you know, points that you'll want to drive to leadership. So sure. scalability, that's, that's going to be the one that I think we see the most common with businesses that are in flex, whether it's up or down. Um, the, the businesses that have a headcount where maybe you don't need a extension 24 seven for every single employee, right, George? Yeah, I mean, this is this is a a staple for this this part of the conversation, which is, hey, you know, um, there's shift there's there's companies that have shift based workers, right? That that don't that all don't 
need, you know, physical devices per employee, right? They're reutilizing stations, cubes, you know, warehouse, uh, home office, whatever, right? Uh, but then there's also the reality that, um, you know, for, you know, if, if you haven't looked at your phone bill recently, right, things do flex up, flex down. Uh, I mean, there's things that that obviously you have to take account for, but, you know, there is the con, there is depending on your, your type business, right? If you're in manufacturing, if you're in education, if you're in government, you know, or maybe you're just a small business, right? You know, sub 10, 10 people, right? The, you know, there's different scenarios now involved where not every device needs to be a, a, a bolt on phone line, if you would, right? Like the right. phone, that's sitting in the lunchroom doesn't need to be the same cost as the phone on the owner's desk or the CEO's desk. And, you know, that's part of it. The other part of it is, uh, you know, not to, you know, think about 2020 because we've since turned the page, but I think last year really, you know, woke everybody up to the idea that, you know, you need to be able to work from anywhere. You need to be nimble, right? The situation could change. Not everybody's walking into the same facility, but that actually has opened up some thought, right? Now you can hire people in different geographic regions that you probably didn't think about before. You know, now you're after the smartest talent uh, available rather than just somebody who can drive to your building. So this definitely helps that conversation, right? Because these people could be anywhere um, and be able to get their job done, service customers, be able to, you know, communicate with the team. Uh, so that that's very really important for sure. So, you know, and, and so the, so what you're telling me, George, is the days of the telephone company charging you a hundred bucks a line for a piece of copper that's been buried in the ground for a hundred years. Those are, those are going away. Or, or $25 a month or $50 a month or for whatever it is. Whatever. Month, sure. Yeah. You know, like that. Yeah. The, the reality is that uh, whether it's the cable company, whether it's the ma, you know, we call it ma bell up here in the Northeast. Uh, you know, the, the original, you know, pre Verizon days, Bell, Bell Atlantic, Bell South, whatever um, those guys, right. Whether it's the, you know, we have, we're in Comcast country up here, right. Comcast headquartered here out of Philadelphia, but um, you know, the, the cable company bolt to line and there's a lot of big box providers out there. Bottom line is um, it's not just a checkbox anymore. It's, it's a potential cost saver, but it's also not just making the phone ring. Right. Yeah. Like, that's it goes that's right to our next point. point. Yeah. So the, um, you know, having done so many of these migrations yourself, George, and having so many par VoIP partners out there, what would you say is like the most uh, profound change that you typically see for a client? It's coming from a legacy system, whether it's an old, old school VoIP system or an old legacy on-prem system. What are some of the new features that they could expect out of a out of a best-in-class VoIP solution when they when they make that switch? Well, it's interesting. I work backwards from business use case, right? Like the phone ringing. Totally understand. Seeing who's on the phone, totally understand. Transferring, cold, conference, all expected features been around forever. Yeah. But let's work backwards from the use case. Um, are your people putting in their time while they're working remote? Can you get you know reasonable reporting to make sure things are getting done? Can you you know find that customer who's like, oh, I talked to so and so, and they said this, and that didn't happen. Can you go back and find that call? Can you listen to that call? You know, can you get back to your, you know, your end customer and, 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 you know, have information to work off of rather than, you know, just a, a finger pointing game. Also like, Hey, what's happening in the moment, right? Sometimes depending on your business, you need to be able to make a move in, you know, on the fly, right? Is somebody available. Are they tied up? You know, how long have they been on that call? Is that an important call? Maybe I need to, you know, send them a quick message because, you know, they need to know something in the, you know, in, in the moment, you know, these are things where, you know, the, and then the other thing is, hey, can I tie this into our line of business app? You know, yep. can this connect to my CRM, my ERP, you know, my, my, my business operating system, whatever that may be? You know, like these are questions that are far above, hey, you know, I'm paying this X per month and can I get this cheaper, right? Now we're into, does it actually provide you some sort of, you know, you know business answer, right? Rather than just the expected. Absolutely. And so with that, there's two other points I want to hit on here for the business case. Uh, as we move forward. But you, know, you and I both know, George, that the, the mobility was a huge thing that came front of mind this year, and not just when it comes to VoIP communication with just kind of your workload in general, right? But you can even see, I, I'm hearing uh, the big consumer facing voices in this space message now to business owners, hey, forwarding that phone system to your employee's cell phone, that probably wasn't a good, I know it worked in the pinch, right? You got that dial tone through, but now your employees are calling, they're getting, you know, your employees voicemail, whatever the case is. So that the advanced reporting goes to that advanced functionality. I can tell you here using a, using a, a 3CX system that we, that we uh, have through BVoIP and George's team, 
Um, you know, our CRM software and our outbound sales efforts, our outbound calls are logged and tracked against the CRM. They're automatically uploaded. This is very useful when you're scaling your organization. Information is king, ladies and gentlemen. And so, okay, we get it, George. VoIP makes sense. You don't need to spend any more time on that. Now, I, I'm at the at the beginning of this sales journey, right? Tell me about some of the things that I should really be thinking about when it comes to my business and where, where do I get started in, in looking at, at, a, at a meaningful VoIP solution? Well, I mean, listen, I, I think I think on-prem has, I think that that story has died a little bit, right? Like, sure. Now, I think a year ago, that was still largely in the discussion, right? Do I put a box in the wall? Do I put this in my server rack? Do I manage this in the closet? And then COVID-19 hit. <laughs> and then a lot of people realized that that decision didn't work out so well when they quickly had to move everybody remote. So work from everywhere is now the staple first beginning position, right? And it's not just work from anywhere, it could also be work from almost any device, right? This could be tablets, mobile phones, you know, specifically desk phones, cordless phones, conference phones, headsets, just plugging in, you know, via USB, you know, like people, you know, you need to be able to be nimble. That's number one. Uh, I won't put an asterisk there, meaning, hey, you know, not all things are created equal and you get what you pay for sometimes, but flexibility is important. And then two, is, hey, you know, if I'm going to put this somewhere where I can do the work from anywhere, right? You know, I don't want to be responsible for making sure that my, you know, my force can work, you know, when they're not in the office uh, and all the challenges that come along with that. But it's it's also the as moves changes, right? It's the adjustments. It's the, you know, the upkeep, right? Security is a big thing now. Um, you know, now that we've seen, you know, I guess every other news headline, depending on, you know, the, the, the newspaper or website that you read kind of thing. Um, so that's something that has to be kept up with as well as ongoing, you know, updates and patches and service packs like any so, other software. George, that's, you, you hit on a point there that I think is, is good for our audience to, uh, to really drive to, uh, to leadership at these organizations. And that is that the set it and forget it kind of uh, mentality of like, we're going to plug in a, a gray box on the wall. And in 15 years, 20 years, we'll, we'll go throw another gray box. And that's going to be the amount of support. And when we need it, we'll call a phone guy in. He'll add an extension or something, right? It's a little more nuanced to that now, right? So with, with that offloading of that responsibility and that offloading of that burden they're hosting it locally, you've got to host this in the cloud. With that cloud-hosted environment comes everything you talked about, versioning updates, patch management, uh, security bulletins, right? So um, these are all things that if... Uh, if you're at an organization and you're an, an IT director or you're a, a you know a, a end user support guy or a sysadmin, do we want one more administration console to support? Do we want one more thing that we need to standardize on? Um, furthermore, okay, you know George, we're we're thinking about rolling to a VoIP system. I gotta tell you, two or three years ago we tried this. We tried a Vonage rollout. It it just cratered. But we've got these Polycom phones that we spent twenty grand on. You think? Can we, can we do anything with that? Like that's going to be a conversation some of these businesses are going to be having, right? A hundred percent, right? Like I, I think, you know, you know, back before 2020, right? It was about cost, right? It was just a utility. It was a, another bill. It was a checkbox. Uh, but but pr proprietariness came along with that, right? You know, like this is the old Avaya, Shortel, Mitel, Intertel-ish type play, right? Where you buy hardware, you're stuck because it only works with that system unless you replace that system and now you've already made an investment. The cool part is that, you know, over time, manufacturers have popped up and realized that some of their equipment uh, needed to be not proprietary, needed to be open standard. And so, you know, a lot of the devices out there, you bring up Polycom's one of them, right? A lot of their equipment can be repurposed, reprovisioned, reset up to a new system. So if there isn't a hardware investment, great. I mean, I always tell people, you know, don't get uh, bamboozled by the free phone, you know, gimmick either, right? Um, when you are choosing hardware, assuming, you know, you know, physical device rather than software or app, um, you need to make sure that your people, you know, are going to be comfortable with it and familiar with it, right? So the one thing that often happens when you're you know, when when you get the hey, it's free, not really. I'm making you sign an agreement. But we'll get into that in a second. Uh, but it's baked in. It's like hey, you know, the free phone maybe not isn't the right answer for you, right? So you know, there, there's a lot to talk about it. But at the end of the day, the the point is flexibility and the ability to make sure that you're not stuck into a financial position that you can't get out of easily. And number two, uh, the ability to mix and match depending on your needs, right? Everybody's company is different. Yeah. 
when it goes into those hardware needs, you, you mentioned that the vendors and manufacturers started to realize they kind of started making these cross platform and, and with the ability to move up, right? I know from our experience, we have seen um, spots where you could have a functionality loss in continuing to use that old hardware, right? So yes, will the Polycom be supported on XYZ? Yes, but call activity may not be as present as you would like it to be, or this functionality isn't there. And so those are things to think about. And I also wanna say there is always a, a misconception around uh, desk phone and desk phone usage, right? And this goes to a generational thing in the workforce. I can tell you that uh, my internal help desk here runs on soft phones, right? They run on the application that runs on the PC and that goes into our, our calling system and has all sorts of integrations, but they don't need a desk phone. Now I'm, I'm a little old school. I want my touch screen. I want my conference. I want my headset lifter on there. I see George rolling his eyes at that, but I, you know, that's, that's what I want, right? So um, because you have the hardware, you may need it. You might not. It's going to be a use case uh, kind of, analysis, right? And I think that's what George really hit on. That's one of the things in working with BVoIP and, and our partners that have uh, pretty robust environments. I mean, this is no cookie cutter solution is going to work across the board, right, George? Yeah. I mean, listen, every organization is different. Everybody has different requirements. And, um, you know, listen, there's some things that are the, the, you know, the case for cross everything, right? If I'm going to pick up the phone and start talking. I get that. And that's pretty obvious, but um you know, like, let's say they're, let's say not everybody's on the phone at the same time. Let, let, maybe you have a small call center type group or customer service type group, like in Reese's, you know, organization, you know, his heaviest phone people are help desk people, right? They're answering and receiving calls from a lot of people, but the rest of his team may not be as phone heavy, right? These are all questions that, you know, you start understanding how the business works, you know, how your teams roll, um, what, what the situation is today, what the situation could be down the line so that you're not, you know, having a, a shorter vision, right? I want to be able to be able to, you know, ebb and flow as things go up or down kind of thing. So that's kind of important. The other thing to, you know, figure out, right, is, um, and, and again, I know work from anywhere has kind of, you know, softened this, but, you know, infrastructure is important, right? If you got the wrong stuff in there, um, then you're going to have a bad experience, right? And that's naturally the knock on VoIP, right? Bad call quality, drop calls, that kind of stuff, right? So making sure that the infrastructure part is correct, whether it be cabling or switching or routers, or even just you have the correct bandwidth, you know, at the edge of your network from your internet providers, or even redundancy, right? Depending on your, your needs. These are all questions that, you know, are important. Um, and, you know, especially with your home users, right? Like a little bit of questioning about what's happening at home, you know, will be helpful so that that way, mm -hmm. you know, you're not stuck when everybody's, you know, calling in about one thing or another and you're guessing. So. Right. You know, the um, man, you, you hit on so much there and, and in, in laying the groundwork for success of that rollout. Uh, we will not take on a, a VoIP opportunity that doesn't standardize against uh, our network stack. So having a managed firewall, having managed switches, having uh, those, you know, VLAN segmentation of your VoIP system, having quality of service, you know, data prioritization on that, that environment. These are all just, these are permissions to play, guys. And so if you're talking to a VoIP provider that is quoting things out without going into this kind of level of discovery, like you're setting yourself up for a, for a rough time. Yeah, um, just shipping the box and plugging in the phone when it shows up and hoping that it works. I mean, listen, if it happens, great. And that's fine. You know, maybe it's doable in a smaller situation. But yeah, if, if the blocking and tackling isn't right, then you're just overlaying no, no. bad on bad. And so that's not going to work. And so, you know, we had hit on this in a little bit, uh, a little bit in the beginning in Georgia, I've got a section here in a little bit that uh, will give you a chance to address kind of licensing based on extension versus concurrent use. But I did want to hit on, you know, when, when you're thinking about rolling a system like this out, uh, when you are, when you're looking at, at rolling something out like this, when do you start thinking about how and where to leverage an outside team? Do you see the, the size of these rollout projects and, and do you see the scope just kind of blow up when it's, if it's not clearly confined? Listen, I mean, if you're, uh, you know, an office manager, an operations person, or even an a, a sysadmin within a company that you're, you know, you're handling day-to-day -day IT, I mean, listen, it all sounds easy until it's not, right? And that's any project. And so there's 
time sprawl that pops up, number one. Number two, if it's not set up right from the beginning, you're going to be constantly be fighting it. And that's not good, you know, in terms of total cost of ownership, if you would, and when it's all said and done. You know, and number three, right? Like, you're not going, you know, I, I get I get everything's different, right? Yeah, you can install Microsoft Office. That's pretty easy to do. But I'm not going to go install CRM on my own probably without some sort of consultant coming in to help me set it up. So there, there's definitely, so, you know, credence to, um, hey, you can learn the system. You can learn what the day-to-day looks like. You can, you know, figure out what as move changes look like. You know, somebody gets married, the last name changes, employee comes, goes, that kind of thing. But there's, the, the if you don't do the correct stuff up front, it never is. It's always going to be a pain ongoing and nobody wants that. Right. You got other fish to fry. So, um, you know, when you're leveraging outside help, um, a lot of it starts with, again, the blocking and tackling. Do I have the right foundation to overlay voice on top of my current IT uh, investment? And then number two is, hey, how does my organization work from a human being standpoint? And how do we get the system to mesh with yeah, your yeah. workflow? That's super important. And- right. Right. And where you get into that, that really advanced uh, kind of consultative effort that you can bring to the table is, is this exact scenario, George. I've got a company that has eight sites across the U.S. Two of them we acquired last year. We have three on Vonage right now. Two are on our, our traditional you know, platform. And the, the seventh and eighth, we're trying to figure out what to do. And when you do a you know, cost analysis on what they're doing and and the opportunity cost of the team's time to, to define, execute and roll out that strategy versus having, you know, some experts knock this out, get some centralized management. Um, we're not going in and keying 200 phones to update your firmware, right? They're centralized managed to that. We're blasting them down and provisioning from there. So, um, you know, how fast do you want to run, right? Do you want to hit this running? Do you, do you do, does your IT department have the bandwidth, have the resources, the time to become a VoIP guru uh, at a growing business, or is this something that you offload so that you can focus on what you do best, right? And that's where we get into the pitfalls of the slopping migrations. And, you know, George, I've seen these, I'm sure as many, uh, I'm sure you've seen them much more than I, but um, give us a little insight into what this looks like when it is done hastily and what are some of the ramifications that that people should be thinking about um, in that regard? Yeah, I always tell everybody to work backwards from the outcome. Um, I've largely been successful with that idea. Um, so you need to work backwards from your human human beings, right? Uh, so you know, the first thing you got to think about is how does your organization function, and work backwards from how do I transfer education and information to these people, right? Um, that's where I start, and then from there I go into how do I get them access to the system. So that things are working. And then from there I go to, you know, did I map out how the system's supposed to work properly uh, up front so that it was set up and configured from the get-go to be successful? And then backwards from that is again, um, you know, some logistical conversation, right? What do I have? How is it working? What hardware, what equipment, you know, where, when, why, how, right? And this is kind of that block and tackling stuff that I've talked about. The sloppy migration happens where um the right discovery wasn't done. You know, you plug it in thinking it's all going to work. And now you're going, but you're trying to fix things, you know, with, you know, the first 90 days is really critical. Right. And even the first 30 days is super mm-hmm. critical, you know, because you know, if it's not up and run, it's almost like you went to the car dealer, you picked up the keys, you turned the ignition, you drive down the street and the car already broke down. That's not yep. a good story. So, I mean, where things, the common areas where things break down wrong equipment selection, right. I mean, yep. it just didn't match anywhere near what I had before two is, I didn't properly map out my infrastructure requirements and my my technology, my physical technology issues that I probably should have pre-planned for. Number three is training, training, training. This is where things can really fall down, um, especially if the system uh, is is really different from the one that you're coming Mm -hmm. from, right? Then they don't even know how to do the basic stuff and frustration there. And then there's other issues around um, things that are almost, you don't even think about them, right? What holidays do you, your company take off? pre-program that into the system at a time and you know what happens if um you need some sort of on-call type service and you need to be able to transfer calls based on certain times what happens when um you know you, you're you're onboarding new employees and you're handing them you know what happens if they bring their own cell right. phone right? And, and making sure the business calls stay off the sure. off the cell phone right there's a the, lot of different there's a lot that, of 
that random phone number, George, right? That was in that one-off SIP trunk account that we, we just forgot about, right? And then it's three months down the road and somebody's like, yeah, we were calling that number. It's like not resolving. Are you guys in business? What's going on? Well, there's like, literally. That. There's, there's the other couple of things that have quickly come to mind is, you know, if there's still an office location somewhere, and a, a lot of cases there is, they're not going away. Um, there's the analog devices, the postage meter, the fax machine, sure. the front doorbell ringer, the overhead paging. Like these are all systems that still need to work. Yep. And a lot of the big, the big box solutions don't account for those, right? And so yep. now you're you're stuck after you you pulled the twelve. And so. George, I don't know if you guys experience this much on the East Coast, but I'll tell you a little curveball I have to watch out for for our our partners down here is. Uh, is city code on alarms, right? So, uh, and it is, this is an archaic thing, right? But I've literally had uh, people reach out to us after they've implemented a VoIP system and they're like, yeah, we need to get our alarm, you know, like a cellular backup or some kind of alarm notification. And based on whatever city code it is, there are cities that still require a analog, you know, POTS telephone line uh, to that system. And these are things you got to look out for beforehand, right? Same, go same goes for elevators. Yep. 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 So, you know, uh, those analog devices you hit on, that's a very good point too. So quite often we'll, we'll do PA systems, intercoms, in, out, legacy ones that we will use VoIP adapters on and integrate them into the existing system. Access control. There's just so many pieces that tie to this, right? And so, um, yeah, look out for those things. And you know, as we start to start to wrap up on this section here, in advice for the audience here, I want to take the advice and really lean it towards these two pieces right here, George. They're becoming more and more of a of a of a uh, permission to play. It's table yep. stakes now, right? So it's not just good enough for your VoIP system to be a VoIP system to replace your phone. It also needs to integrate into these third parties now. And furthermore, leadership's going to be expecting that because their buddies' businesses have that, right? Yeah. So like simple click to dial or a simple pop for the contact record. I mean, that kind of stuff's been around since, geez, uh, Microsoft Office, you know, 95 probably. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, everybody's not on paper anymore, right? And everybody's kind of starting to graduate, if you haven't already, you know, where you have a Salesforce or a HubSpot or a NetSuite or an Infusionsoft or some sort of CRM or operational based system where, where things, you know, need to happen on the day to day, right? And being able to use some of that data to intelligently, you know, get people where they need to go, right? Um, you know, and be able to track things automatically and be able to, you know, tie your call data into your CRM. Um, these are things that, you know, are really starting to become, you know, really helpful for business, but I'm not gonna almost say mandatory requirement, but it, it really takes some of the human element out of it. And rather than having to remember to go do something, uh, it's just happening. So that's number one. And then, you know, you bring up, you know, the other item here, Microsoft Teams. I mean, obviously, Microsoft is the, the big man on the block. Um, and, you know, Microsoft Teams is very popular now, right? It's part of the pretty, basically every 365 plan that you can turn on. Um, so uh, there is a voice component to Microsoft Teams. Uh, where you can actually, um, you know, kind of start to make and receive calls out of the same interface that you're doing, you know, instant messaging and scheduling and all the other flow kind of apps that you can do through Teams. And I know Reese's, you know, working, Reese's team works with Teams all the time. You know, natively Microsoft charges for every single user, like the big box providers for every single user or extension that's in the systems, $20 per user. Um, but like, like we've seen with other organizations, that sometimes doesn't fit, right? Maybe your organization doesn't need a bolt line, I call it, for every single user out there. So we've had, you know, and then the other thing is being able to enhance the native Microsoft offering to include some of the more advanced features that will handle things like, you know, group calls and call queuing and, and some of the other things that really help just more than the basics, right? So, you know, you know Microsoft Teams uh, and Teams Voice is a cool story. Uh, it, obviously, if you're already using Teams or the Microsoft 365 stack, you know, it's kind of evolves that experience. And so, George, like if you were if you were a company that already had your ducks in a row and you had high level compliance needs, so you were already on an E5, you might have a, a viable option within Teams and you need very basic call functionality that may be a home run for you. But, you know, as well as I do, if you want to kind of lift the veil up a little bit here, uh, the, the Microsoft pure VoIP solution here, if you were to hold this to a candle to a, to a VoIP provider out there, uh, any mainstream provider, these are not going to be comparable, are they? 
No, I, okay. it's, made, it's almost like a, you know, you're adding a cell phone account to, to somebody's user, right? Make, receive calls, basic voicemail, you know, but when it comes to, you know, more advanced strategies and reporting and recording and all sorts of other things that you would expect comes out of a more mature phone system, it's not there, uh, but you can merge those two scenarios together, you know, and you, the screen that you have here, right? Depending on your 365 inv- you know, plan level, uh, like you said, Reese E5, right? That's kind of the big kahuna. You already have the ability to kind of flip the switch and connect some dots together. But if you're underneath the V5, um, there is a way to still get the team's voice experience uh, without paying that, you know, per user kind of handcuff, right? So, you know, there's a, a lower, you know, kind of uh, license queue that's available, right? They call it the Microsoft Phone System User, um, which comes at a much lower cost. And then you can obviously add on the functionality and feature set that you need. And then the cool part there, you know, is that not every user in the company needs to be in Microsoft 365, right? Like, you know, there are people that aren't the frontline guys, aren't the office people, uh, or whatever it may be that just maybe only need basic email, right? Or something like that, but need to be on the phone system. Uh, instead of having to have every, all or nothing, you can mix and match, which, you know, really helps for those, you know, we mentioned it earlier, right? Those tertiary things, right? The front doorbell system or, or the, the, the lunchroom phone or whatever, right? These are, these are not things that need to exist in Microsoft land, but you can still kind of inner, inner system dial between the two, right? And pick and choose who belongs and where. So this has been a, a really nice, uh, unifying layer between these two pieces because we are a huge Microsoft cloud-centric security focus shop at, at, at TechVera. And so, um, you know, having so many of our partners lean into teams, we've been doing live teams trainings here every month, I think, I think since the pandemic started here. It's a game changer, right? So getting unified, uh, having a single pane of glass for that kind of stuff, but not having to incur unnecessary costs from Microsoft, still getting your full phone system functionality. It's just a little nice integration, right? That brings it over into that. Um, it's been a game changer for us here, George. I, I just, we live in teams now. And so I, I did want to put that out there. It's something you should be considering when looking at, at VoIP solutions. Um, so on that note, this is where this is going to get interesting. George and I are friends. We're, we're comfortable here. Um, you guys on the, on the uh, uh, session here, I'm sure you've heard of some of these providers. And uh, one of the things I want you to think about when we talk very briefly about some of the players in the, in the space and things to consider is, is maybe your licensing need because there's players out there, um, you know, big players such as like a ring central, right. For a, for a, for a, for a decent phone system with dial tone and core functionality, I'm sure they're okay, George. Right. But there's probably use cases where they're not right. If I have a thousand employees in shift work, is ring central going to be a good fit for me? Probably not. Um, you know, like they'll heavily discount their user pricing. Uh, I mean, all the big guys do, right? Once you get past a certain point, but they're still, you know, in the in the per user, per device, per extension, you know, kind of costing structure, and that largely breaks down in uh, again education, large multi site corporate offices, government, um, manufacturing, right? These are industries where there's just a lot more things out there than they need to have outside line access, right? And th- think about the old phone system you bought. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, right? Like, yeah, you said, well, how many, how many phones do you need? And then they were like, well, how many outside lines you need? Let's call the local phone company and just get them installed. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's called oversubscription, right? Not every user needs to be on the phone system. Uh, You know, and, and, and not every user needs to be on an outside line, I should say. So, but in these big box providers, right? Bond and drink century show up on the screen, eight by eight's another one. Um, per user per month. That's how they do it. That's how they've always done it. That's how they'll probably do it for a long, long time. And, um, you know, every time you need to go up, right. Every time, like everything's kind of a nickel and dime operation, right. So, you know, once you get past a certain point, you need to upgrade. And when that upgrade happens, there's a cost. There's not just a cost, there's a term. So, um, which makes it difficult to flex up and flex down at times, depending on market forces, you know, if you have to add more people or reduce people because, you know, the reducing part's the hard part, right? If you've been locked into a term because you you went in on something or upgraded something, now your term's been, you know, uh, extended. And now if you need to reduce people and then reduce cost as a result, you may be locked in. And, and that happens. Uh, so with these and with these types of providers, George, typically they're they are doing the full solution, right? They're giving you your dial tone. They're giving you the soft phone app. They're giving you the service and support. 
Um, I can tell you doing vendor management in the past, working with, with some of these guys, man, resolution time for our clients, it was a beat down. It was a beat down. And as some of these companies grew, uh, their support, you know, it, it became that much more apparent that they were ill-equipped. And so these are the guys you could go to to get a fully managed solution. These are the guys who are going to quote you on the phone. They're going to drop ship you stuff and just best of luck, right? Okay. Right. That's probably not going to work for us, right? So, well, what about, George, the the frontier guy, there's a guy who had a frontier shirt on. He came in my office, real slick, smooth talking guy. And I don't know what happened, but my office uh, receptionist looked at our bill and theirs and he showed us this cost benefit analysis. We, and we got a new phone system. We got a new phone system. Is it's Frontier? It's a Spectrum phone system. That's what it is, right? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, this is uh, it's, this is what I mentioned earlier, right? The cable company bolt on, um, or the whether that's fiber cable, what your internet provider, right? Um, they, it's not their solution, right? It's usually a third party that's been branded for them. That's number one. Number two. Uh, it's locked into their circuit, right? So if you you have to get their internet connection, uh, if they go down, you're all down, not just internet, but phones. Uh, so you don't have the flexibility for, you know, a little bit of redundancy strategy, right? So Because it's all or nothing coming off that same, that same line. Right. Uh, and then the other thing is that, again, <laughs> and this happens even at home, guys, right? The triple play game, right? Hey, you wanted to add the premium channels. You wanted to add, oh, well, but it's cheaper if you do three instead of two. And then all of a sudden, you know, what you got was not what you were needing. It was just the cheap offering at the time. Um, that That's not a guy that's going to go deep, right? That guy's trying to count handsets, say, here's what your price per user is. Sign this two, three-year deal and you're in. And you're stuck. <laughs> you know, yeah. A lot of the times they even sell you equipment in that scenario or offer mm-hmm. you equipment in that scenario that has been made proprietary specifically right. for them that you can't yes. with that equipment. Absolutely. I, I, we see this all the time. And the, the, the gall of a, of a cable internet provider to come in and then sell you a VoIP solution and piggyback it off their cable infrastructure. And then you have call quality issues. You're like, huh? Oh, End of day, it always has call quality issues, George. Three o'clock, it's the weirdest thing. Yeah, I mean, cable internet. Know, they try and do their best to mitigate that. Here's the reality, right? The, the older cable networks that are really shared in the end, right? You know, when everybody's Xboxing and PlayStation. Sure. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. Here's here's the reality, right? Um, you know, redundancy is super important these days, right? We know the internet is usually good, but in some, you know, you know, some cases is not, a, you know, not good. And when it's down, it's a bad day, right? It just like when you get that flat tire or you get into that accident, right? What's your, what's your plan for that? So, you know, some redundancy is important because, um, you know, if anything, you want to keep the, the business running, right? You know, even if the system isn't available or the, the provider's down. So, you know, at the end of the day, the other thing that I've noticed, you know, with the, the ISP-based solution, I mentioned that, I mentioned earlier, right? Hey, I'm going to take a open source, open-ended device, open standard device and proprietary it. You know, I had a, I had a partner of ours um, who, who came to us with one of these, right, from Verizon, right, like your frontier. And it, there was a la- it was a later generation model, right, like last year's gear, you know, the, the, the Verizon's logo on it, Verizon's name on it. And then if you leave Verizon, you can't, even though that device off the shelf, non-Verizon style could be reused anywhere, theirs couldn't, right? Yeah. You were hmm. stuck. So, so that kind of things. All right. So George, then there's door number three, right? The big box guys aren't working for us. The, the slick door-to-door salesman, that's not going to be a fit. We're too big for that. Right. So we've got an IT partner we've been working with. I know they have a VoIP offering. You know, if, if I'm considering bringing such a critical part of my infrastructure to my IT provider, what are some of the things I should be looking for? What are the things I should ask that IT provider uh, when it comes to their VoIP offering? Yeah. I mean, listen, um, uh, how confident are they in it? What does support look like? Um, can I make changes on my own or do I have to, you know, ask you to do it, you know, depending on the scenario, right? Some people like one, some people like the other. Um, what happens if there's a major issue? Uh, what's my backup plan, right? And ultimately, uh, how easy is it to, uh, to make changes, right? I mean, organizations flux up, down, left, right all the time. I mean, it's the, the times that we're in. I mean, these are things that are super important. And, and also the reality is, yeah, and again, I guess what you know, with the internet, you know, being able to walk in the door isn't you know as top of mind as it was before. But sometimes you need somebody to walk in the door. Sometimes sure. it's not obvious, 
right? And you're not going to get that from some of the guys on the top of the screen. So, yeah. So that was so that was all very very useful things for our audience to consider, George. I wanted to give uh, you the floor here for a couple moments just to give the uh, give the audience an idea of what Bevoip, your company, what that looks like in terms of the landscape, a little bit of history, and uh, you know what what would that experience look like for someone yeah, considering so for partnering this, with you? Yeah, so just you know, two seconds, right? Sure. Uh, Thirty seconds. Um, we started this company out of an IT services provider, and to you know, work with uh, with IT companies and managed service providers out there. Uh, companies today has a little over thirty employees. Uh, we have um, you know about getting close to 2000 partners of which Reese's company is, you know, one of the top ones that we have here, you know, in North America. And, you know, we also uh, have something like 8,500 active downstream uh, end customers to our partner network. Uh, we develop things here internally on our own. We have, we, our support team backs up our partners. We don't expect the end users to know everything. And that's why we went to market with, people who are infrastructure savvy, who understand the blocking and tackling so that we can help them overlay this on top of solid footing. Uh, we didn't think it made sense for everybody to just plug things in and work. We know that that's not how things really happen. Uh, and you know, the best way to succeed is to work with somebody who does it right and does it right from the beginning. If you do that part, then we're going to help innovate and keep things uh, modernized and keep things uh, top, you know, kind of fresh, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, in, 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 in kind of big picture, right? You know, we service IT service providers who then turn around and use our technology, no different than them using Microsoft's technology, for example, or Dell or whoever, to deliver solutions to their end customers the right way and plan it out and map it out and do it right. And that's how we've started our company. We're about six years in now, uh, starting this year and uh, doing well. Thank you, man. So, George, I know we've hit on this a bit, and I've got a, a section here for you to talk a little bit about some of the kind of uh, support and, and methodologies you can do this here. But could you briefly give the audience a little bit of an explanation? 3CX is a name in this space, right? If I'm an IT guy, I may have heard of it. I may have implemented it on-prem back in the day, right? Yeah. So where does BVoIP play in that 3CX VoIP solution equation? Why do you make sense being in the middle there? Yeah, listen, I mean, you can take any software and install it on any server and hope that it works. Um, there's, sc there's scale there, right? And there's maturity. So, you know, we've done a lot of development on our own. We've done a lot of scaling on our own. I mean, you know, we're, you know, obviously doing this at the thousands and thousands of companies. So, you know, obviously it's important to understand what that scale looks like. Uh, we don't do things in a bubble. We always think what that looks like for everyone and, and, and you know, what that looks like for multi-site and what that looks like for multi-home users and, and all that jazz. You know, at the end of the day, uh, our goal is to streamline and standardize, right? I mean, we want to do things in such a way that we're not having to do it the hard way every single time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have a slide on the screen where it's open standard support. Yeah, we built, you know, we, for example, we went to the four manufacturers and a few others that, are, you know, from the screen and we said, hey, I don't want to log into every single manufacturer portal every time I got to do something. Let's bring it all into one place. That was a simple starting point, right? Like I may have multiple devices from multiple different manufacturers and I want to be able to manage them all in one place. Why was that so hard to think about? Uh, it isn't, but somebody needs to go out there and do that. We thought about it from the view of, you know, what the day-to-day -day, uh, experience would be like for the guy who having to keep, you know, keep things rolling and make changes for you. And these are some of the things that we wanted to block and tackle for our partners so that they could, you know, deliver this, you know, scalably. Awesome. Thank you, George. And I can tell you from our experience, having, uh, having been a eight by eight partner before and, and being that middleman between our partners, our, our end users, our clients, and, uh, and the vendor, you know, having to manage support and resolution with 8x8 versus working with George and his team, it's been a night and day difference, right? And so, uh, you know, BVoIP having mastered this 3CX environment, standardizing it, templatizing it, keeping it updated and maintained, providing continuity over the top of it, these hosted environments having all sorts of geo redundancies and that kind of stuff. These are all the pieces that, that come together to provide a really like a best in class VoIP uh, solution. So, man, oh, this has been so helpful, George. I want to um, take a moment here as we wrap up. Uh, I look at our chat and our Q and A here, see if we had any questions from the audience. Does not look like there have been any at this time, but if anyone has any, please do not hesitate 
to, to throw that out there right now. And uh, I know we did cover a lot as we as we wrap up. We'll we'll send the recording out. Uh, we've got a deliverable, a little uh, one pager that we put together for you as well about VoIP. And and um, there's plenty of other resources that we can direct you to on our website, YouTube channel as well. So if anyone has any questions, we'd we'll be happy to answer them. If not, looks like I'm about to give you a little bit of time back here in your lunch hour. Um, organizations that are looking to augment their existing IT uh, infrastructure, whether it's their department, whether it's strategic, whether it's tactical, this is exactly what my company does. George is, uh, and his company, BVOIP, are a leader in this space. Uh, we're one of their fastest growing partners. And uh, we've been a partner for what, five years now, George? Yeah. So um, yeah, these are, these are uh, two really strong companies that if you are looking to empower your organization, with VoIP, I highly consider you to uh, <laughs> reach out to us. Let's talk about it. And if you'd like a complimentary strategy session, if you want to just talk about uh, what you're considering, that kind of stuff, I'm sure George would be more than happy to uh, hop on a call with us. He's done that many, many times with our partners and prospects. So um, no matter what stage of this journey you're on, um, there's always ways that, that you can you get help from, from a company like BVoIP and uh, good IT partners. There's tons of them out there. But if you want to find one that can knock this out of the park for you, come talk to Reese at TechVera and we will do that for you. So I'm going to wrap up. I want to thank you all for being here today. George, thank you for your time. Uh, if you all don't mind on the way out, I'm going to launch this poll for you. And um, yeah, give us some feedback. Let me know how we did. And um, we will see you next time, guys. George, thank you so much. Audience, you all have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll see you next month. Take care.